Hello booktube, welcome to part three of my Christmas book haul. I'm going to start this off with something that isn't actually a book but it's a kind of bookish gift. Um, so I wanted to include that before I start on the books that I bought myself for Christmas Eve time. This is a really shiny, I'm sorry, CD of Spoken Word by Sylvia Plath. And it includes Two of a Kind, which is Sylvia Plath and Ted Hughes in conversation, a talk with poetry readings and a review of contemporary American poetry and um, other readings. So Sylvia Plath being one of my favourite, favourite writers, that's something I'm really looking forward to just spending some private time with and really enjoying. The first book that I'd like to talk about is It Looks Like You're Writing a Letter by Alexander King. I ordered this from the website itself, New Romantic Press, that uh, published the book. This is something that the author set up himself after writing the book during NaNoWriMo 2013. And I was one of the lucky people who got to not proofread, but to sort of read the book before it officially was released. So this is really special to me. And Alex has even sort of written in the front for me. So this is a really treasured buy. Basically, this is Blade Runner on Speed combined with Facebook and 1984 themes. Um, it's a social media, social commentary, sci-fi, mystery romp. It's really great fun, it's really funny, it's really quick and gripping and hopefully there's going to be a film coming out of it so read the book first. So go to New Romantic Press's website, I will link to it down below and get yourself a copy. You can also buy it on Kindle if you're not feeling so flush at the moment, uh, it's a bit cheaper on there, but this is really nice and really orange and cool. Another friend of mine designed the cover, so I feel really connected to this book, I really like it. The next few books are from a charity shop haul. I often go around charity shops with a friend of mine, rummaging for junk and for cheap stories, because, you know, everybody likes to consume stories. So, Terry Pratchett being one of my favourite writers, this was on my list of books that I've been looking for for a little while, so obviously I picked up this copy when I found it for cheaps. This is The Amazing Maurice and His Educated Rodents, and as I understand it, it's one of his kids' books, which are equally as brilliant as his grown-up books. Maurice seems to be the Del Boy of Tomcats. He's a streetwise con man Tomcat who has a plan for the rats. So that sounds really fun. Terry Pratchett always has a unique, interesting, hilarious take on well-known ideas. Terry Pratchett actually made me want to be a writer. Next up is Lysistrata uh, by Aristophanes. I have never read this, but I have to learn a classical monologue for an audition in February, and also I really enjoy Greek plays. The best way I can possibly describe this book is with two bits of information on the back. Aristophanes' comic masterpiece revolves around two themes of enduring relevance, war and sex, as a devastating attack on military madness, also telling a plea for the supreme sanity of peace. Next up is Redwall by Brian Jack. This is a series I've been wanting to get into since I saw the cover of one of the books in a bookshop when I was little, so like probably about 25 years ago, um, and it was a mouse or rat hanging off a precarious something over a great height. Next up is the first in the Aragon series by Christopher Paolini. Nobody needs me to describe this book because everybody else has read it. I'm just late to the party. So if you do need to look it up, you can Google it. The next one is one of my more impulsive charity shop buys. I saw this box set and I couldn't help myself because it's too pretty and exciting and cute. So this is The Further Adventures of Eddie Dickens by Philip Ardar. The characters on these books looked too fun um, to miss out on. The illustrations are fantastic. Um, it looks like it's within my kind of sense of humour, my kind of wavelength. Next up is The Colour of Magic by Terry Pratchett. This is the first book in the Discworld series, which is the best book series ever written. Get into it if you haven't heard of it. Terry Pratchett is the one who made me want to be a writer because he gets it. He gets everything. Um, this is a stupid, funny, excellent, intelligent, space opera, fantasy, stupid um, bunch of characters and stories. 
Next up is a play, I am into my theatre. This is The Caretaker by Harold Pinter. I'm a bit ashamed to say I don't know the story of this one. I've never performed it or studied it, so I'm really looking to get into another classic. I've heard a lot about it, obviously forgotten it all, so that's there. Canal Dreams by Ian Banks. I've only read The Wasp Factory of his before, but that was pretty striking, so I'm really looking forward to my next Ian Banks experience. This cover's really nice, it's plain white and it's got dips in the design so you can kind of see a bit of a shape there. This book really struck a chord with me uh, just in the description. It's called Quiet. It's by Susan Kane. You can't really see that there. The subtitle is The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking, so that's enough for me to want to read it. I also found a book copy of Wicked, the musical, so I'm looking forward to seeing and reading that. It's a retelling of the Oz story from the perspective of the Wicked Witch of the West. Next is Ingo by Helen Dunmore. Helen Dunmore is a writer that I'd heard a lot about from a friend before Christmas uh, and it also seen this cover at a children's writing workshop that I went to a few months ago. This really struck me as just really pretty, it's got like turquoisey shimmery bits. I recently read The Lie by Helen Dunmore which is a post-World War One novel uh, it was incredible, so I'm really looking forward to getting into more of her writing, and I believe this is the first in a series. Next is a really nice hardback copy of Artemis Fowl. I haven't read any of these before, and it's another children's book series that I've been dying to get into and join the club with. Um, this is a really nice shimmery cover. Yeah. Artemis Fowl is apparently a criminal mastermind who steals a fairy, so within the dust jacket it's got this amazing stuff on the spine. Next is In Bloom by Matthew Crowe. This is apparently the new Adrian Mole and Adrian Mole was one of the biggest formative uh, young adult books that I read growing up. This one sounds equally interesting and valid and validating. The last book I bought myself around Christmas was with a book voucher so it's kind of still a gift. This is something that I had my eye on since I f saw the pictures of it to begin with. This is The Sleeper and the Spindle by Neil Gaiman with illustrations by Chris Riddle or Riddell. Um, this is incredible. Uh, it's black and white all throughout with gold uh, touches. It has a plastic dust jacket with beautiful smooth hardcover inside. <coughs> The inside of the hardback cover has this really nice map sort of illustration. The illustrations are just really beautiful. Those are what first drew me to the book, but also the fact that Neil Gaiman sort of re has retold this revisionist version of the story is really in appealing and interesting because A, I'm on a sort of feminist drive at the moment. Feminist stories are really interesting and Neil Gaiman is one of the most interesting writing voices around, so I'm really excited to read that too. Thank you for watching, I will see you next time.